and welcome to Credit Matters TV. I'm Cecilia Ho, Standard & Poor's Communications Manager here in Asia. I'm joined today by Ritesh Marshwari, Managing Director and Lead Analytical Manager for Financial Services Rating here in Asia Pacific. And he's here to join me to talk a little bit about the Europe debt crisis and how it's going to impact banks in Asia Pacific. Welcome, Ritesh. Hello, Cecilia. So, Europe debt crisis, very hot topic today. Um, Standard & Poor's have recently downgraded several European sovereigns and also several banks in Europe. So can you tell us what is the likely impact for Asia-Pacific banks? Yeah, the impact is multidimensional, uh, though the, at the overall level I'd like to summarize that it is a manageable impact. But the impact could come through uh, direct holdings of uh, European debt or banks' uh, exposure. It could come through export linkage impact from the uh, lower export growth for the export intensive economies. It could come through the tighter financial markets which could have a funding impact uh, on, on the banks which are more, exp more dependent on wholesale funding or it could simply come from a dislocation in the market which then causes asset uh, markets to be volatile. So there are many ways and it, it is uh, going to affect in all those ways but when we look at the current scenario all of it looks to be manageable and the Asia Pacific banks can withstand. Uh, thanks to their strong uh, balance sheet positions, sound capitalization, and good funding and franchise right now. I'd like to highlight uh, uh, Japan though, that Japan is the only system where we have some negative outlooks uh, outstanding, but that is uh, largely because of the sovereign rating, which is itself on a negative outlook. And what's your base case scenario for the most likely um, impact that the Euro debt crisis will bring to Asia Pacific banks? Right. The way we describe uh, our probabilities to our scenarios is, uh, as you rightly said, uh, base case is the scenario to which our ratings uh, speak to. And uh, that scenario, in case of uh, European situation, which is constantly evolving, we have uh, painted as uh, that the fact that global uh, situation will not go into a severe recession, though it will still be a mild recession. Uh, from a numbers point of view, uh, Europe uh, which is the Eurozone economy, we are projecting to grow by about 0.4%, uh, whereas US uh, will go a little better, uh, but still about 1.8%. Uh, closer home here, uh, China will end up growing, as per that, our projection, somewhere around 8%, which would amount to a soft landing for China in 2012. So could there be a worst case in any way? And what would, would that have material impact for Asia-Pacific banks? Oh, certainly, as in the situation is really evolving and if things uh, are not put right uh, in, in a timely fashion, things could worsen to a level where it has a much bigger global impact and Asia will not be uh, immune to that. Now the way uh, that could happen is through export linkages uh, and hence there are many economies in Asia which are more dependent on that. Uh, the banks in those systems will pr probably feel the pinch by way of weaker borrower uh, credit quality by lower incomes and to some extent even uh, dampening uh, capitalization uh, levels. So it could worsen and if it were to worsen uh, we will have to relook our ratings and the way we will uh, relook is we'll first look at the macroeconomic scenario. We will incorporate that in our Bicker assessments and if the Bicker assessments were to get modified uh, then we will have to relook our bank ratings as per our uh, revised bank criteria in which uh, we start from an anchor uh, rating and then we look at individual banks factor and then arrive at their individual ratings. So yes, of course, it could worsen, uh, though it's not our base case scenario yet. Are there any particular systems that you would like to highlight? Yes, if I have to highlight one system, that will be Japan. And there are uh, three reasons for that. Uh, if you look at the direct exposure to Europe, uh, Japanese banks are relatively the most exposed. They're still not significantly exposed, but relatively the most exposed. Uh, then we look at the fact that uh, Japan, uh, the Japanese currency tends to appreciate when there is a global uh, fear kind of a scenario. As in it happened a few uh, weeks back when investor confidence took a knock on specifically on euro, Japanese yen appreciated. That tends to have a negative impact, uh, obviously, for Japanese exporters. And the third one is 
that uh, Japanese sovereign rating uh, is, is on a negative outlook because of the fiscal challenges of the government. If any of uh, the economic uh, uh, challenges were to uh, kind of further take the rating down, uh, then we will see various uh, bank ratings in Japan also getting impacted because of that. Uh, but if you were to look at slightly at a broader concept, context, the bigger challenge is uh, for the export dependent economies. And I would like to name uh, China, uh, Hong Kong, Singapore, uh, Korea, Taiwan and Vietnam as well in that. Australia, Korea are more uh, dependent on wholesale funding. Uh, as in their banks are more dependent on wholesale funding and hence uh, any squeeze in financial markets will impact them. India however has its own challenges and uh, European stress could just add to those challenges. What about the leveraging of European banks? Is that going to be a threat for Asia? Yes, European banks do have significant uh, operations in Asia and uh, because of the problems in their home markets they might have to reduce their uh, exposure. So it does have a material impact, uh, though on the bigger picture sense, it, uh, it doesn't have a severe impact at all. And if you look at the numbers, uh, we, did, uh, we studied the BIS uh, statistics on exposure to, of European banks to Asian systems. And we find that Australia, New Zealand, Singapore, Hong Kong, uh, Malaysia and Korea stand out on that. Uh, the moment we dig deeper, we find out that HSBC and Standard Chartered, because they are London headquartered, also get counted. Now these banks anyway have strong Asian franchises here. If you were to take UK numbers out of these numbers, we see that the numbers, uh, of your, the numbers on European exposure to Asian systems are lower, significantly lower for Singapore, Hong Kong, Korea and Malaysia. Uh, however, Singapore and uh, Hong Kong are anyway international financial center. Now that means that uh, they are more dependent on such retreat from European banks. So th th definitely there is an impact, but it's, it's a mild impact, manageable impact. Now finally, is it all bad news for Asia Pacific or do you see some opportunities in this situation? <laughs> as in there are two sides of the coin, so there is, uh, there is some silver lining here as well. Uh, the retreat of European banks is offering opportunities for the local banks to expand their businesses uh, locally or even globally in some cases. Uh, we saw an uptick in the credit growth for Singaporean banks. Uh, it seemed like it is coming in from uh, the fact that their competitors, uh, the, typically the European competitors are retreating and hence they have opportunities to pick up certain clients. So the credit growth for Singaporean banks was much stronger. The other thing is we've seen uh, Japanese banks pick up uh, to businesses uh, sold or divested by European banks. We are still hearing about many other uh, businesses of European banks which ostensibly are on the block and Asian banks could be beneficiaries there. Thank you very much Ritesh for your time today. Thank you Cecilia. That's all for our Credit Matters TV session today and we hope to see you next time.